So I think, yeah, because it, it says should be recording the screen. Yep. Let's hope. Yep. Um, one thing that we will we should discuss is um, I think what we should do for your presentation is create like a couple fictional accounts. Okay. Uh, on Nebraska, that way you don't have to mess with any other login. You'll have your own login. Uh, are you guys doing this uh, at, at a certain event space or anything where you'll need? Yeah, it'll be, um, we're doing it off site. It will be at Innovation Campus. Okay. Um, and you don't have a problem logging into the, um, oh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the like network to be able to get onto archive. I guess um, probably what you use when you go home, when you work from home. I usually just work at the office. <laughs> oh, you're well, in the office. I mean, I can take my okay. laptop home. I just never do because I'm like, I'm just going to get this done at home and then be done. <laughs> or get that what you have done. to log into to get into RamQuest, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm trying I to usually think. end up, let's see, I did it, oh, in the last couple of months I got on at home. What did I, um, I think I just did I had to do the um, Google Authenticator, but I think I maybe I have it set up okay. on my. But I might I, have it, I don't know yeah. if it's saved on my Wi Fi, and that's why I don't have to do any more. Yeah. But so when I get on the archive at home, I always have to log on to my uh, my like network here. I don't have to pull up that, but I have to my um, I always forget what it's called. Anyway, we'll figure it out before you present, just because. Okay. It's like you can't use archive outside the office, if that makes sense. Okay. So, oh my For gosh, it's transcribing purposes. this as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. It's... Okay, that's bizarre. I didn't realize it was trans transcribing it. But, <laughs> anywho, oh, you can use to... You can. There's a stop transcription. Oh, that's all right. I'm not too worried about it. It's not going to hurt us, I don't think. Um, no. Okay, so basically, we'll figure it out before you go present, but you'll have to log on to a, um, like, a VPN type thing. Okay, I do have a mobile VPN um, as an option. or It was a link that I think we always had to do or something before, but I do have. Okay. And someone like Jen would know because she probably travels from different offices or goes to different offices. Okay. So they probably have that. I don't know. Who knows? We'll figure it out. We'll make sure you've got it. Um, okay. But once we do create like a fictional account, what we'll have to do, and I can do this, is call contact Sean Stoop, and he'll create like a corresponding account in RamQuest. So that okay. way it'll act like a real account, but it'll just be a test account. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk to him. There might even be some that are already created for Nebraska. I don't know. So after this, you know, I can contact him. We'll just do it with, with you on the email as well. And we'll just ask him to kind of create something in RamQuest that we can correspond with archive here. Okay. Um, and then that way, because, I mean, we do have these demo archives, which you could use, but I think it's just being on your own site makes a lot of sense. And we can duplicate one of these files to make it look like a typical file. Or whatever files you guys use. Yeah, because yeah. that way then someone's not like, oh, that looked way different than I'm used to seeing. And yes, yeah. So that we like to do a lot of training like that. So um anyway, so that's that's kind of what we can start with. The other thing that I've because I don't know exactly what you all know and what you use and what could be new information for you guys? So I have pulled up a few, um, and I can send these to you. But uh, and we could always dumb them down to their their. I mean, at least just take off some of those last pages because a lot of the but it's the release notes, and a lot of the last pages have to do with a bunch of internal stuff that you would never need to know. But yeah. um, I've pulled up the last two release notes, so from the last two releases. Okay. And I figured we could go over some of the things and maybe you could take notes on what you think people are, are already using and we can just scratch that or what you think people need to see and what you want to demonstrate. Will that work? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I just, instead of just kind of you, because if you don't know that it exists, you don't know that it exists. So it's if, exactly. unless I share that's, it to you. So that's what I'm afraid of. Like there's probably a lot of different things we could utilize in there that no one knows about. So yes. Um. And I'll be going back and forth between these two accounts because okay. 
some stuff I might move to accounts or copy or do something and I don't want to mess with these. But if I'm just like in a regular account and I want to view, do like a quick view. One of the things that I don't know if you guys are using is that the next and previous so when you're in a quick view and you open up one document, uh -huh. so if you want to look through all these documents that, you know, pretty fast, you can just right click now on one of them and then you can just click next and it'll take you to the next document and the next document. Oh, that's nice. I didn't you know, even you know. Can even, I didn't even yeah, you can open view. it up a little bit bigger and then the previous is over here. So you can go previous. Okay. So it's become really handy, especially if a few things are maybe named the same thing and you want to make sure, you know, that something's different on them or something. You can just scroll through all your documents. Yeah, if you have a number of addendums and you're trying to find a specific one, you know. Yeah. So this has been something that people requested and it just it works out great. Okay. Um, you know, you can also click on a few documents and then right click and I know there's a quick open I forgot how I haven't done this in a really long to time um maybe you just click on it oh there is one where you it didn't do that I'll figure that out here in a second but um okay. there is a way you could open up a whole bunch of documents at the same time okay and I swear it's in here somewhere. View. Oh, I think maybe if you just click view doc, it should open up all of them, but maybe not. All right, I will figure that out. There is a way to do that. I just okay. threw that in there. That wasn't on my release notes. <laughs> um, so that's that's kind of one of the things that that happened about two years ago, maybe a little longer than two years ago. Um, okay. uh, Okay, in the recycle bin, I don't know if you guys ever really use the recycle bin, but if you're in here and you're, let me go on one of these, and you're going, you know, you're deleting a few, mm -hmm. and they're in your recycle bin here, there's 57, so they're in your recycle bin, you can actually now do a quick view of these. So, it used to be where you'd have to download it to see it. And okay. so we've made it to where you can just do a quick view now in, in, in your recycle bin. But this is if, you know, if you've deleted a whole bunch of documents and you're like, oops, I forgot to, there's one I didn't want to delete. You can do a quick view of them and check and figure out which one it is. Okay. Uh, so that's new. That was new a couple years ago as well. Um, Okay, here's where you can open multiple documents simultaneously, except it didn't work for me. So multiple documents selected. I wonder why it did not work for me. So I thought I was doing it right. And then you right click and you do view. Oh, quick view. Ah, there we go. Uh, so, so as you can you see, it kind of popped up funny. So part. now you can pull them to the side and you can kind of compare two documents if you wanted to. Okay or just have them next to you. Or if you want to take this one and pull it over to your other screen or do whatever you want to do, but it keeps them all open. So it opens a whole bunch at one time. Okay. So I, you know, it's just, it's just something that if you don't know it exists, you don't know to use it and it might help out some people. They might like it. So. And so if someone for some okay. reason ever wanted to look through all of them, every, everything that's been dropped, you can drop it. You can click that. Yep right there and do yep, the same you thing can then click this yeah and you could do yeah don't do it because it'll have been a million <laughs> yeah it might take a while but there they are they're all opening up okay. so yep i'm well, just gonna go like this to check the whole file and they're like okay i want to look at everything and that way they have or they can do that previous uh, you know and, yeah and, we okay. do have, I'll show you this in a minute, but we do have a way that you can now take a look at the whole file kind of as a whole. Not, you can't like preview all the documents, but I can show you what we can do. Okay. Um, okay let me close out of these. So yeah, I really did open them all. Okay, so 
Uh, yeah, so that's it's really handy. So it's not the I had initially thought it was the view doc. It's quick view, so you can quick do view. a quick view of them all. That's why okay. it didn't work for me. Uh, let's see, ability to set default email subject on email templates. Okay, uh, I yeah, don't know how template. much you. Yeah, I don't know how much you guys use email templates. Um, let me go to your email templates. I know you I guys have a lot. Department uses them for title commitments, but I think the escrow team could potentially use them as a use them as well and they don't and I think they yeah. don't know how to set up templates and and I can show you a few things, but there's a few here. Um, so this Omaha title search, they're obviously taking advantage of it. So and Vicki Williams. So basically what this is saying is like here's usually there should be a template here, but She's put down here in the subject Ramquest property address and folder ID. You can also do, I mean, there are so many. If we click on here, you can look through all of these. You can use any of these. So you could have the at property address. You could have um, the buyer name, the seller name. Uh, any of these Ramquest fields will pull in here and you can have that be your subject line and it'll pull all the information that's associated with that file. Okay. whatever file you're using the template on. So right now it's Ramquest property address folder ID. So if you're in this file, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up some of that Ramquest information. So the property address and folder ID. Uh, so the Ramquest info, this is where you'd see the property address. So you know what field. So here's the property file. address. So this will show up. Actually, I think it's just going to be 5506 because they have property address full or then just property address and property city, state, stuff like that. Um, OK, so that could be that. Or again, you could have the folder ID, which will just pull in the folder ID. So um, that really helps. Uh, you know who takes really good advantage of this is um, Rochester. Let me pull up theirs just so you can get an example. And we could always create a template for you that looks like one of Rochester's. So you can say this is an idea you guys can use in the future. Um, but they have all these different teams. So they have like the Austin awesome team, but then they have blue team and okay. gold team and green team. And then if you okay. go to the security, only the people in that team see it. So in the security, I think their president sees it. But then really it's just the gold team that will see those email templates. So you're not having you're not flooded with all these email templates. Um, but what they have is like maybe an intro email. So when they first have, you know, someone come in, here's their email template and it just, you know, says congratulations on the closing. Or if it's if you're sending it to a lender, you could say, you know, thanks for choosing us. Here's the information. Um, and then this will pull in all this request information. And then they have like different closing process. Um, and they even have the estimated closing date already on there. And then they just have their contact information and they send it on. So this is where they have the GFNO number, which I think comes from Ramquest, but I think that's basically the folder ID, right? Something like that. Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I've never heard it called that, but yeah. And then you have the property address, the seller name, or um, and then to the buyer name. So you've got all the information right there, already ready to go. And then they go down the line. So they have the commitment email. My favorite is the scheduled email. So what this does is it says your closing is scheduled and it has all your information that you need when the closing is scheduled, but then it also will pull in the closing date and the closing time because that's already in Ramquest for you guys. So it just, yeah, you don't, don't have to think go looking it up. The, yeah. yeah. I, well, I don't think we utilize that, but if we did, then that would be great. That would pull right into that. Okay. Yeah. So it just pulls, so you don't have to go looking it up. It just pulls it in and then you have your different addresses. So if they, they, you know, some people only do it in Rochester, some of them do it, but you can have your map uh, oh, and just have nice. all the information that has to do with your closing. You know, they have got some COVID information or whatever's left. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you just, you know, so you can create any kind of template you want and then they just send them out and they just send them out whenever they're on certain steps. So they have the refi, they have the seller, the buyer. 
So they just have they, all these different steps. So then um, when you're done going over the templates, if you'll show me how you're sending emails from archive or from yeah. Um, archive. Yeah, I could show you how to do that. Um, so yeah, so and then that, right there, that just has all the information you ever need. Uh, and a lot of times they don't necessarily send a document with it. So I can show you how to do that too, where you can just send out an email template without a document. Uh, but I'll show okay. you that as we, well, I guess if you want me to show you now, since we're on email templates. Um, you don't forget to get back. <laughs> yeah. So basically when you're in a folder and say you do want to send one with a document, you can just click on any document that you want to send. You can either send it, you can make it public and you can send it a few different ways. You can send it as an attachment or you can do an email hyperlink or send it like as a zipped folder. So if you know that it's a pretty big file, you could send it as zipped, like this one's pretty big or, um, but sending it as an email hyperlink really helps too. Um, but uh, once you do that, you have a couple options. One is you can do a quick email and that would be an automatic email that you've set up that's kind of your default email. And we you can set that up in your, um, in your uh -huh. like profile, yes. Uh, or you can do an advanced email and this is what they typically use. So when you pull up an advanced email, from here you'll have all your contacts from RamQuest. So okay. you've got the closing agent, you've got um, the seller, the referral, the buyer. I don't know what referrals mean, but the customer, you know, so you've got different people. I mean, this is two page worth of contacts. So you've got all these different people. So you can pick and choose who you send. You can, you know, CC people or BCC people. So once you've picked your people, I'm not going to send these to anyone. But we can always have some fictional people in there um, or just send them to yourself. Uh, okay. So I'll just send it to myself for now. Um, you can also do, you know, kind of a notification. So if you've sent this and you want to be notified like a week later, you can get a reminder and set that up. Um, and then this is where you'll pick your template. So because I'm the admin, I see all the templates. But again, if you're just part of the Austin group, you'll only see the Austin templates. Uh, so we'll just start with the intro. You could do an internal note, but you don't really have to do that. And then you just generate email. And what it's going to do is it pulls it up in Outlook. OK, so I have to go down here, keep that and then open the email. And here's the email it's set to send to me. And then here's where it pulled in all that information. That so file. you can see, you know, right there, that's just the subject line. It's ready to go. And then here is their email template. And they make it real skinny like this because it shows up well on phones or tablets. Okay. And so they like it skinny and but you don't and you don't even have to use any images. You don't have to make it complicated. You know, you can even make a template and then at the very end the people can send can, you can just insert, you know, you can just insert your signature. OK, you know, so I can I can. Oh, I don't have any because they've they've changed the way we do our signatures, but you guys will have a signature here and you can just insert your signature. So, um, you know, we could make them a lot simpler. We can kind of play around with them, but. You know, if there's someone there that wants to work on templates, we can definitely do it. Um, and then you just send it on. All the information's in there. It's got everything you need. It pulled in the um, estimated closing date in here. And then you just send it on. And so that's uh, how you so send. Yeah. Sometimes we have, um, you know, like, like a preprocessor send out those welcome emails. Um, is that so if they pull up an archive, it doesn't necessarily it will send from their email then, right? It, can, it won't show necessarily like that it came from the closer or. Um, it shows for whoever's the one that's sending it unless okay. they're part of a group um, or like a, if they have the option to say it's sending from something else, you can select who it's going to be sent from, but that's all through Outlook. So that's that does okay. not have to do with our guys. We have some like team team Anna, team Alyssa emails. So if they had access to those, then they could 
have it sent from those. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If they have access to those emails that like, say if someone responds to that email, it goes to every one part of that team. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 In Outlook, in Outlook, you can actually choose who. Oh, your drop down. Yeah. Like I don't have that option because I don't send from any others, but you do have the option to send from whatever group you're a part of. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because um, you send then, that afterwards. So yeah. So when you send it from, if you're in archive and you're sending it from there, um, does it save it, it is? So if someone wants to see that was sent, would that be your, in your personal emails? Then again, it's not going to show like that template was sent in archive, right? It actually does show that. So if you okay. send it, yeah, if you send it through archive and, and as long as you kind of choose some of the, the people that helps, you know, if you choose it through here, because I know that you can go into Outlook and add whoever you want to add to the list, but as long as you choose it from here, it saves who you sent it to. It has all that information. So you can go to your history, and then you can go to email history and you can see what emails have been sent. Okay, from anyone that was on there, not just in like the, the emails I would have sent. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, if you, we work on a team, like say the processor sends it, that way then, you know, the closer could see that, oh, they sent that email. Yes, yeah, so you can see. Okay. So right here, oh, we can yeah. see Sue Hansen sent it, you know, sent these emails at this time and then that there were documents. See, where, where there's a blank right here where it doesn't say who it's to, that means she did not add the people. She added the people later in the in the actual Outlook email. But if you add it through, you know, if you add it as you're sending the email, so if we go back in the documents and you, again, you go to advanced email and you add the people here, that will track that. So if you're adding all these different people anyone who you add and it's like this is what it looks like when it's done so you just add people and then it'll show right here so and you can even type out your own emails um, but it just shows right here and then when you generate the email it'll pull up an outlook that you're sending it to those people so even if there was someone that you needed to add in addition that maybe it wasn't included like a processor for the lender or something like that you could still at least type their email in there yeah you, you can just do a comma them. and type it right here okay and okay. then you just send it on so and then it'll pull up in the email and it'll pull up in your outlook email and it'll show who you're sending it to but as long as it's sent through this right here you can actually track who with who it was sent to so again okay. back at this history and you go to email sent um it this could say who it was sent to so here's uh this must have been one i tested or something or 8 30. that was not long ago so this was sent to me but it tracks that it was sent to me or did i just do this this is 8 30. this is the one i sent today um or was going to send today so it tracks that i sent it to this person so you can actually see all of that information um we can look at so now this one i have sent a million things through here and i've done because this is our little play account um you know your history email so we've got all these different things that was emailed so if someone responds back to that email it still just shows you your outlook it's not like it goes like you'd have to yeah. check your archive yeah, it doesn't go to your archive. We don't have okay. it set up like that yet. So it'll just go yeah. back to your Outlook. I just didn't but want to have to like check way. two spots. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great way to have um, all those templates already set up, ready to go. And it like the welcome templates, um, you know, you can put in whatever subject line you want in that template. And I can help them all set up their templates however they want to do it. And that's how you do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. That subject line was huge. I will tell you in their templates, what they were doing before we did that subject line, they were putting all of this information, all of this information right here, they were putting it at the very top here. So then when they go to send it, they need to, they have to cut it out and put it in the subject line. Because it, all of this information still pulled in, we just didn't have the availability to put it in a subject before. So once we okay. added that, that took away one of their steps. 
So that was a huge thing that we added um, that they just loved. Um, and then the permissions. Now, again, the security. So if only certain amount of people or certain groups are going to send certain ones, this is a really great option to just, oh, I don't know why I sent on the COVID. But um, again, for the gold, it's just got the gold team and maybe somebody else. So um, and then we can go in and we can actually set up those teams and just add people. You know, if someone leaves, we can remove them from the team. If, if there's a new employee, we can add them to the team. And so that would be for the permissions. We need to contact someone at your your office. Yeah, yeah, okay. we can set those up pretty easily. Um, and so once we set up the team and we can uh, the, sorry, a template, we can say, you know, who all needs permission to use this and then when there's a new employee and they're going to start using those templates they can always just send us an email and say hey we need to add this person to the gold team or whatever team that you're using and so but we we are able to make the templates ourselves, correct you and actually then... can make them um okay. if you want to make them yes you can actually do that and you can do the security um on the ones that you've made so as okay. you can see a lot of these are admin made and so that means I can create them. But if you create your own template, you can manage who uses it, who can see it. Okay. We just use it. We just, I, I create so many templates and I use them so often that um, I'm pretty fast at creating them. But if you okay. want to create your own and then you just need some guidance, you can create your own as well. Okay. I just and wanted to just, give them that information if, you know, so they aren't, you know, if someone wanted to do it themselves, they aren't still, you know, bugging you. If they, yeah. if, you know, if they wanted to do that themselves, then they can, you know, feel empowered to do so. Yeah. And the, the templates are, so if you want to add an email template, you can either copy one that's already there or you just add one and say, we want to call it, oh, say you want to just call it test. And it's going to be owned by, it's acting funny, admin, insert. So you can insert this. Oh, shoot. Now I have to go all the way to test. But once it's blank, oh, I've got a couple tests here. But once it's blank, you can just edit it. And then it's kind of like a Word document. I mean, you can change the fonts, you can type things, and then you can you know, highlight it and say, okay, I want this red. And okay. so you can, you know, you can kind of create them yourself. Um, sometimes you might get stuck if you want to add images and it's not working or you want to resize them or sometimes you need, you need a little guidance, but otherwise, you know, it's kind of like designing just a Word document. Okay. And there uh, was, I know on some of the templates, they pulled in things that were in RamQuest, like the closing date or things like that. Yes. I'm assuming that there's a... Yes. Way to do that. So on here, so if you're in here, you can go to, so there's merge fields or keywords. Mm -hmm. So all the merge fields, here's where you have all this information. But then if you scroll down a little bit, you get all this RamQuest information. Okay. And so you can just add buyer name. If there's two buyers, there's a second buyer name. Uh, you can add you know, the loan number, you can add the mortgage policy date. I don't know what any of those mean, okay. but um, there's a few yeah. keywords that are kind of the main keywords for the account. But I typically go to the RamQuest because if anything's changed in RamQuest, it'll automatically change in here. So I typically go to the RamQuest information and add that stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're already here. You don't have to memorize them or anything. You just go find the one you want to do, click on it, and it's already yeah, set. Nice. Yeah, and then same with here. You just click on here, and then you can kind of scroll through and add what you want to add. So closing time, and you just double click, and that'll be right there. Nice. Yeah. Well, I have a yep. feeling that, that maybe we can maybe use, utilize the email a little bit better than we oh, are. Oh, good. So. I'm glad. Okay. Um, okay, this is where... This is where if you do, if you want to send out an email, but you don't have a document you want to send with it and you want to just send out an email. Um, let me go back into here. You can actually go to oops. So you're in account in an account. Let me go to here to the top and you can go to contacts. And then what you can do is you can actually select 
certain contacts. So you want to send this to so and so this person, but you also want to CC this person. At that point, you can go ahead and click on email and you can pick your different templates and it'll okay. get the email all ready for you in Outlook and then you hit send. So you can send it without doing a document by just going to the contacts, selecting who you want to send it to, and then pick your template and go. Okay. Um, so that's fairly new too. And I don't know how many people really use this. Um, I mean, I know Rochester uses it, but I don't know anyone outside of that. So um, that's pretty handy. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, you never want to overwhelm everyone with too much information, but if you want to do email templates, you could do a few little tips and tricks and then focus a lot on email templates if you really think that's something that people will benefit from. And then we can say, you know, if you're wanting more, you know, detailed information or you need, you need some help, then, you know, I can say we can contact, you know, give someone as a contact to coordinate that or. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, you know, we can definitely focus on that if you want, but we can still go through all of these. There might be a few other little tips and tricks you might find um, that you think people will use. Um, all this, you don't necessarily, I imagine people are finding all this information, but the RamQuest has definitely become a little bit more advanced. We've added different um, information. You know, we've added more information from RamQuest. Um, so that's basically one of the new enhancements from a couple years ago. Um, but I think you're pretty used to it now. And then you guys all use DocuSign, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So all of that's kind of new. And if people are pretty used to using DocuSign, they probably don't need any training on that. Um, so I will, I'm going to skip the DocuSign column um, and the DocuSign envelope. And one well, thing that people may not know on DocuSign is once you've created one, if you need to go back and modify it or, you know, some, you know, if you can add a document or remove a document, I don't know if they know how to do that. Oh. Um, I think they know how to generally create it and send it out. But if there's anything that changes after it's sent, I don't know that they have good information. Yeah, on that. as long as the person has not um let's see here as long as they have not completed like picked it up and signed you actually can go in it by clicking so right now we have the green so that means somebody already signed these um but document oh but does not require signatures let me test so say we want to send this and Oh my gosh, I haven't sent something to DocuSign in a while. Okay, sign electronically. Oh, I was choosing a virtual. Okay, I get that. Sign electronically. What? Are they saying they're all virtual? Oh, I keep clicking on the virtual. Uh, so this column, the virtual documents, I don't know why I kept clicking on those. Okay, sign electronically. That's correct. I'm going to send this to myself because I don't want to mess with anyone. I hear my trash being collected right now. Okay, so place signatures. My gosh. Is this how slow it is for everybody? Um, I mean, not, well, I don't know, not usually. Okay, so we wanna put a signature here. Uh, maybe a date here. Okay. And we send it. So once it's been sent, you'll get this blue little thing that it's document, but, but signatures are unknown. No one signed it yet. 
So you can actually click on this and it pulls up the information as long as it's not green and has not been signed yet. You can pull up this information and from here you can edit it. Do you want to be? Yes, we want to go to DocuSign. So if they sent it off and right away they catch, oops, I forgot to add one signature. Oops, I forgot to do this. They can go in here and they can correct what they needed to do. Um, so you can actually add another recipient if you want to. You're like, oh, I meant to send it to the husband, but the wife also needs to sign. You can actually add her as a recipient as well. Um, so you can kind of do a few different things. You can change the message if you really want to. Um, so once it's ready and you have it from when you want, you can go to next and then it'll pull it up and you can move the signatures around. So if you added a new person, That'll be in the drop down and you can add the new recipient or you can just edit and add a new recipient right here. Um, or if you forgot to, if you meant to include another document for them to sign and had forgot to do that, um, you could add that as well, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so here's where you just kind of add a new recipient, but yes, you can. OK, done. Um, go back to here. Yes, this is where, where was it that I've seen that you can do that? So this is the one we chose to send. I swear there's a way to send another one. Oh yeah. Do you do upload? I think upload might be uploading a template. Oh, okay. Um, but I swear there's another... I thought there was another way. Let's see here. Maybe here. Replace. I don't know what replace means. No, it pulls this up. So yeah, I don't know if you can actually go and add more documents. That's a good question. I thought you were able to, but it doesn't look like you can. Huh? I'll talk to our developers who did the interface on here. Um, I mean, advanced options? No. Cool. Oh. Yeah, I don't see it so far, but you can add a new person and you can change around where you add the signatures, but I don't think you can add a new document. You might and have to send that separately. If you go to the next though, are you able to in there? So here's one, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, documents. Edit documents. Yeah, this is where there's your document. Okay. But again, I don't think you can add more. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll ask if that's something we could do in the future because that would be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah, because sometimes I, you know, there's one that the buyer needs to sign that the seller sign and I forgot to grab it out of the seller side. It's like, oh, I need it. So, you know, um, so and rather if than. If they have not signed it, you can always delete it. Uh, by deleting it, what you would do, and it just won't work for them anymore. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm sure there's a way to delete it. Holy cow, I don't know if there is a way to delete it. I mean, I imagine what you can do is just remove the document itself. Yeah. And that'll that'll that means they have nothing to sign. And so then you send a new one. Yeah, so I think you can just delete the document. Oh, okay. That should work. And then that way you just have nothing to, they have nothing to sign and then you just start over. Okay. Um, but yeah. Oh. Delete, I don't know, that would be deleting the whole document though. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
I'll look into both of those. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. Um, a few other things that we can go over. Let me think here. Um, it, combining, uh, let's see, combining the P multiple PDFs into a single document. Um, change the order of the PDFs using drag and drop. Um, so it used, okay, so you used to have basically two options to combine documents. You could, um, go in here and go to split PDF, and then you could amend or append a document, or if you you right click, you can go to um, view doc, and then you can append the document or import certain pages. So if you have this document, but you want to maybe add maybe an archive document to it, to the bottom of it, you can pick any of these documents to add. But now what they've done, let me make sure I'm in. OK, good, I'm in the demo. <laughs> um, what you can now do is you can grab a few documents in here. And then you just go up here. Sorry, I didn't mean to right click on that. You just go up here to combine PDF. And there's your PDFs. If you want to reorder them, you just drag and drop and reorder them any way you want them in order. And so that'll combine them all to one deal. So if you are, you uploaded maybe 10 things, but you want all in one package that you're going to email out, you can combine them all to this one document. Um, and then if you forgot something, you can actually add another one. Or if you have one that's external, so you can add one more. And then if you have one that's external, you can go in here and browse your documents and add it from your computer. And then once okay. it's ready to go, you just click combine PDFs. Oh, you know what? We probably changed the status on that one. We can do it through like RAMP archive or under this test. But basically what it does is it combines it all to one PDF. That okay. demo sometimes doesn't have the right items, so that's why it probably did that. Um, and then, oh, I always right click. It's such a habit. And then you just combine up here. And if it's ready to go, or again, you can move it around. It might take a little longer depending on how big they are. Oh, I just, I did. I picked one that's 12 megabytes, one that's five megabytes, one that's four megabytes. So that will take a little bit, but what it's doing is it's combining them all into one PDF. Okay. I can't believe I just picked those huge ones, but um, so that that was kind of a new one that people really wanted because, you know, they're like, I wish I could just go through and say, okay, I want all these combined, but I want to reorder them and I want to do this. And so we did it. So we set it up to where you can now do that. Um, so that might be a new feature that people like. Um, they when we were talking earlier how you wanted to be able to view yep see i think it just went crazy because i just tried to combine some really huge pdfs but um so the other thing that we have is now you can view a whole summary of a page um so you have a folder summary icon which Trying to remember where we have that. There it is. OK, so we have a folder summary icon. So what this does is you've got. All your documents here. You can even see the doc type doc category. You can even view them from here so you can do a little quick view see what they are. So you can see the documents. You can also see keywords that are associated with this, and you can see any folder notes or document notes. So these are all a bunch of test notes that we've used, um, but you can see any notes that are attached to it. So it just kind of puts it all in one deal. You actually have two pages of documents here. 
so that's kind of a folder summary. You can email it and what it'll do is it'll create a PDF and it'll email it. You can email it to yourself. You can email it to somebody. If someone says, oh, I want to see every document that's in this folder, you can just email it right off to them. You can also save it. So you can just save it as a PDF on your computer or edit notes or do whatever, or maybe that was, and then you can just print it. You can print it right from here and select your printer and it'll just print off like this. So that's kind of a quick little way that you can just see your whole folder at once. Um, and then I know you guys use sub and virtual folders. I believe you guys are some that do that. Let me look and see. Um, I wouldn't even know which accounts have sub and virtual folders. It looks like this one does, but. Um, or maybe not because it doesn't give me the option. Wait, this I was going to say, I don't know if other departments do, but I guess I'm not. I don't know how to do sub and <laughs> virtual yeah. folders. So so this one does have it. So this one has um, a folder here. I don't know exactly what that is. So it's either a subfolder or a linked folder, something like that. So you can include that. And what it's going to do is it's going to include all the documents from that folder as well. If as long as they're linked, you can see the documents. So if they're linked for a specific reason. So you've got these documents that are in here. So here's where they are. So you can actually see which folder they're linked to, but you can put them all in one folder. So if you want to email out documents that are included in both folders, you can do that now. OK, so you can kind of include. Sub and virtual folders or exclude it. So you just click that button right there. So not all of them are going to have it. This one does. Um, I wonder if this is a test site. This might be because now that I think about it, like, not, I don't know, maybe it's not test. We can find out. Um, but it's just kind of ironic that the one we were looking at actually has subfolders. See, none of these have a subfolder, but I know that you guys do use subfolders because you guys are the ones who requested this. So if you don't have any subfolders, that doesn't even give you the option here. It's only an account with a subfolder. That gives you the option. But um, so that might be really handy for some people. Other people might not. Um, so that's a little new. Um, I think you guys have probably already noticed this, but documents from closing market and file scanner paperless closer are automatically importing now it, as virtual documents in the archive. They've probably noticed that this has been happening. Um, I don't know if they. Usually they have to go in and import them themselves, so I think it's people are really liking it and they would I imagine they'd come to us if they did not like it, so we can always turn that feature off, but um, it pulls in all that information. Um, and then I don't know if you guys ever really use notes, but it is pretty, it's a lot more advanced. If you're looking at, let me go to one of these. So if you're looking at different folder notes, it's just a way that you can communicate with other people through this and that way you always have a record that is associated with that file. Um, you can even add notes. If you're in a document, you can add a note to a specific document as well. These are notes that are to a specific document. And if you hover over, you'll see the most recent note. So there's two notes associated with this one. So you can only see one now, but if you click on it, you can see both notes. Um, okay. But if you go up to notes, you can see all the notes that have to do with the whole folder. So you can do view all notes. You can add a folder note. Um, you can reply to them, forward them, and then what happens is, is if you, as you're adding a note, so if we add a folder note, what you can do is you can notify. So another test, there's so many tests. Um, you can also change the font, play around with it. Um, you know, you can do different colors of the font. Um, so it's just kind of like an email sending it off all pretty if you want to. But if you do save and notify. 
this is when these are only demo users, but this is when all your users would pop up and you can actually say, OK, I want to alert so and so that this new note has been added. Okay. And it'll be everyone who's a user from N Nebraska Title Company. So it's just a way to communicate. So if you have added a document maybe and you want someone to be notified, instead of just sending them a Teams request or sending them something, you can say, um, you can say, hey, this, sorry, I moved that. You can just kind of grab one of these and say, hey, you know, I added this final policy and you want to add a note. You can say, hey, I added this final policy. I thought you'd want to know. And then you can notify them that you've added it. And it sends them an email? It sends them an inbox notification, but most okay. people now are getting inbox notifications as emails because that because it's the DocuSign notification way. So I pretty much you'll get an email. Yeah. And okay. um, when you're in the email, you can actually click on it. It'll open archive into that folder. OK, so it's just a way to communicate if you want to keep records of communicating. Not a lot of people use it. I doubt you guys use them. Um, like there's no notes here. I doubt any of these have any notes. Yeah, you guys just don't use them, but if you'd like to start using them, it's an option. OK, if you see a benefit. You know, it keeps them organized and it's just a way to kind of keep notes organized about different files. Um, now, is there OK, so there this is kind of kind of related, but kind of also a side question, but um, we keep um, just on one of our drives copies of, of entity documents, so LLC corporation documents. And someone had talked about, you know, well, maybe we need to create a whole like file on archive and just keep them in archive versus on just a drive. Um, because then there was talk about doc getting that document into each file that we're working on. Okay. So if it if they determine that it's a good idea to import all of those to an archive folder instead of having them on just one of our drives, um, is there a way? I'm, I'm maybe I'm getting and maybe I'm just a uh, wishful thinking, but you know, is there a way to if you have a something like say we have a new file with a LLC that we've already had that operating agreement for, so we already have that document. Is there a way to like? Is if there is a keyword, you know, with that LLC name that it could pull into that archive folder that might I, I like I said, I might be asking a lot on that, but I didn't know if that's something that would even be possible because I know there is the different, you know, um, fields that you could pull in from RamQuest. And so I yeah. thought, well, if there's a way that you could set it up that if it pulls this RamQuest um, name, if we have an associated file, I don't know. That, yeah, like can, said, it, can it automatically go into that file? Yeah, and thing? I think they were just wondering about that for documenting things for um, for underwriters if they come in, you know, um, if they audit a file, that way it's already in there versus having to go to another place to find it. And yeah, um, I don't think we have it set up to where you can automatically. And from what I'm hearing, if you were thinking about creating like a file that would have all of them in it, what you could do. Like if you have, is there is there ever something where it's a document that's going to be in a whole bunch of different files? Yeah, yeah, a document like that might be. It's a, the operating agreement. We might have this buyer buys. Well, I have one where the seller has 30 lots that they're selling. So there would be, you know, 30 files. And rather than drag it into every single 30 yeah. of the files, it'd be nice if we could, you know, somehow okay. have it pull in. But what you could do is have a file that has it or put it in one file. And then say this one right here, we want to what you can do is you can um, do a virtual copy. OK, and then once you do this, you can actually add like 10 folders if you want to. So let's try. I mean, I don't know any of these folder names, but I'm going to do a test here because. Good Lord, there's going to be a test. So there's one Amber test. Awesome. Um, you can also search for different folder IDs. So say you've got them all. I'm just going to search numbers. OK, that didn't work. OK. 
Okay, so what you can do is you can say, okay, I want to add it to this one. Oh, God. Um, but basically you can add, because I don't know any of these folders by heart, but what you can do is you can add like 10 folders if you want to. And then once you're done, you virtual copy and it'll send it out and it'll be in every single one of those folders. Okay. So um, it that was not a good example because I don't know any of the names of any of these folders, but let's search again. That was easy when I did a T. Um, George of the Jungle, double click on there. So there's one that we've added. Um, let's add, oh, oops, search. Let's do T again. There were a lot of T's. Uh, Mighty Mouse, we can add Mighty Mouse. So you can add all these folders and you can go ahead and virtual copy that. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, we do. And what's, oh, that was that escrow department one. Yeah, that already gave me that warning. So get rid of that one. Now virtual copy them. Yes, we want to. So what it's done is it's created virtual copies. So if you go here and you hover, you can see that we added it to George of the Jungle, Mighty Mouse, or Amber Test. Okay. If you click on here, it does give you a little bit more information and you can actually click and go to any of these folders. So you can go to this Mighty Mouse folder and you can see that it was added. Okay. Right here, this HCH buyer. So, and then, it, you know, if it's a virtual document, you can hover over that and go back. Oh, it's in this Tyson folder. So there's your HCH do document. So that is a way that would really help. I think if you created a folder that maybe had, you can create it and call it anything you want really. And you can add all of them to it and then you can go through and add them and share them with whichever folders is, that you want to. Okay. So that might be something we can set up a um, folder. Well, we can set up a few folders where you can choose um, like if you're in your archive and you're demoing, you know, you can have your demo folder that you're working out of, but we can select a few other folders maybe that you're going to virtual copy them into. So you can demonstrate that. Okay. If you think that would work, if if you think that would be a good demonstration to show people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that could be because I don't know if everyone knows that you can virtual copy because sometimes we have two files that are associated with each other, but they're different you know so yeah. um it might be nice for them to see both you know yeah um, or some of the documents may want to go back and forth to both so then it'd be it'd be nice to you know and again, can you, you virtual can copy a whole like because i i swear i was on one that one of the title examiners i think virtual copied like or had anything that was added to that file in archive automatically virtually copied to another is there um a way I don't do know that? about automatic like if you add it to a certain file will automatically go into another I don't know about that I do know I mean by linking folders so if you have two that are kind of similar or they're associated with each other that's what these two are this this Nathan and Crystal Flyd and then uh Nathan Flyder and Crystal so those are linked together. So if you say we wanted to do Mighty Mouse and Tom and Jerry, so if you're in Tom Mighty Mouse, what you can do is you can actually go to details. And if it's linked, what you can do is you can just link it to Tom and Jerry. So Tom. And so now they're linked. So what you can do is you can keep them separate but also if you go back here in Mighty Mouse and look at the documents, again, because they're linked. Oh, this one, the demo site doesn't have it. Um, what it does is it pulls in like this one where you can include virtual sub or virtual folders. So that I don't know show. why we don't have it in this demo one, but. Um, so it would actually show that they're linked together. And okay. so you can show doc, you can show the documents from both folders into one folder, or you can keep them separate out. So okay. I, I don't know if some people already know how to do it. Somebody obviously did this one. Um, let's see who actually created this. 
Gail. Is that Gail Crawl? Is that her name? Gail? Someone must have um, been doing that from her computer because so this she's is her a receptionist, was, so I don't yeah. think she'd do that. Okay, well, it says Boulder folder created. So um, the other one, let's see who created this one. Folder created by Kay Jansen. Oh, Kim Jansen. Uh, hmm. They both do order entry, so maybe they were testing something out to. Yeah. So anyway, so those. So some people at least know how to link them. <laughs> um, okay. but that might be something to demo too. What we could do is just, you know, divide the how much time do you have to present like an hour or 50 minutes or something? Um, I have to remember how much time I have. I it might be 45 minutes. OK, we could just break this down into like maybe two or three options of show, you know, different things to show. One will definitely be emails and email templates and maybe give that the most time, 25 minutes or something. And then um, we can just kind of break it down to a few little tricks to show, but then also maybe do um, what were some other things that we were looking at that you think, oh, you know, the combining of the PDFs or um, just a few little other action items. Um, the virtual being able to, you know, do a virtual copy and sending them out to a bunch of different you know, so we can kind of break it down in a few different areas and that'll not bombard them with too much information. Yeah. And also not is exhaust it, you too much. Is there also some maybe settings in their profile on how it, or that they can maybe make it look how they want or some different settings in there? Because I don't even know if anyone adjusts anything in their profile. Sorry, yeah. I don't know if you have a couple more minutes to go and Oh, go I'm in that. no rush. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm since I'm under admin, I'm just gonna go to users. Let's just go to your profile. Okay. Hmm. So for you, it'd be tools and then my profile. So it's okay. it's pretty easy to get to. Um. Well, here I can just show you on this one because this is as a user. So tools and then my profile. So it's right there at the top. Um, oh, I had it open in a separate window. Here we go. So here's your profile. I have it's so big on my screen, but um, you look like you have all your information filled in. This is great because if you're ever pulling in a signature or anything like that, it'll pull in all your information. Um, you do not have an email template. So if you had, so all this, these are custom fields. So say, let's just say this side of things is for maybe an email signature. Okay. So if you're going to do a signature in a template, you'd want all this information to be filled out because then it'll just pull all the information like a signature. So okay. that way you wouldn't have to add it in Outlook later or you wouldn't have to type it. Or if it's if a whole bunch of different people are using the same email template, you can set it up to where it'll pull all your information from your signature. We can make it look like okay. a signature and it just pulls everything. So um, we do have a few custom fields where it would be um, like maybe your license number or something along that uh, something along those lines. So um, so that's kind of what this side of things is on this side, your email information. So Outlook is the email that you use, um, but an email template. So this is where you would do your quick email template. So if you had a specific one that you use all the time, you can just go ahead and select that email template. Um, okay. You know, we'll just do NTC test for now. The same with a folder invite template. Usually you just kind of do the one of the same email templates that just says, here's your documents. And then there's the actual folder invite template, which we'll have to look at those. I don't know what they look like, but um, you can also do a default email subject, which with these templates, most people don't really even do a default email subject now because they're already going to be in the templates. Um, so that's just kind of how you set up any quick emails. So if you just send one out all the time, it's the exact same one that you send out all the time. You can just do a quick email and it'll pull it up every time. Okay. Uh, so that's what you do there. These would be a little bit more default. You don't necessarily want to mess with too many of these. Um, 
but like default link name options. So this is if you were going to email a link to a document, okay. um, you can actually change uh, that to maybe it'll be the folder ID, it'll be the folder name. So basically it's just kind of how you want that link to show up. What it, what do you want it to be called? Um, the default is the uh, doc, I think it's the document name or something like that. Um, yeah, default custom name link. So this is kind of stuff that, and you can even do a link expiration. So if you're sending a document out in a link and you want it to not work a week from now, so you want them to have to contact you to open that document again, you could set a email, you know, a, a link, uh, uh, you know, sorry, expiration. Okay. Uh, so really, I don't think anyone would be messing with any of these. And then, you know, this is if people are using passwords with their emails that they're sending out. Okay. Um, and then these miscellaneous settings, I wouldn't necessarily mess with these either. This, okay. um, so really it's just kind of, if you want this information and then up here, this is a lot of different things. How you want your new folders to look, it's, um, we already have, you know, the drag and drop. We already have a lot of these things in here, but this is just, if you, yeah, you don't want to download emails as RTFs, so you want to do them, I don't know. So that it's just, these are just stuff that, now the send inbox messages to email, you could click on that because that means all of your in, inbox notifications are going to go to your email as well. Okay. That's probably so already set, yeah, that's probably already set up with a lot of these because so if you go to um okay, what am I trying to do here? Oh. So if I go to inbox, you won't have this option, but if you go to your own inbox, but if I go here and I want to open a user's inbox, we'll open yours. So here's your inbox. You obviously don't have a lot here. Um, tool, okay, tools, settings. So what this does is you can forward inbox messages to email. So you can do it here. And so then it'll just automatically now forward all your inbox messages to your email. Okay. Um, or you can do that over in your profile. So you can also do it right down here. So it's just, oh gosh, hide RAM quest documents. See, you don't want to do that. So I don't mm -hmm. think anyone really wants to mess with these, but the okay. sandbox inbox messages. So see, it's already checked because we just did it on the other side of things. So I just don't know if people really want to mess with this, but if people want to start sending out templates with their signature in there, we can kind of design that a little bit. Um, okay. I did design one for Kansas. Let's see, where is KST? Oh, all the way at the beginning. Um, and so there's, I. it's just a very basic email template. And this might be one that we can show as a demonstration plus the, comp the complicated one. And I'll help you set these up and everything, but, um, this one that I sent that's pretty basic. I think it's just KST. We'll try this 2018. Yeah, so it's just, here's your documents. They show up in this link. And then here's where all of their information is going to pull in. And so that looks like their signature. And then they're done. And then they just send it off. Okay. Because as long as all that information is filled out, it'll pull in all that information. Okay. So we can set up a template like this and you can demo with this. And then we can also set it up with those kind of complicated ones like, like um, Rochester has. And we can kind of do it specifically where it'll pull all that information in and we can kind of test it and do all that stuff. Okay. So have I bombarded you with way too much information? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's so well, that's why much we recorded there's... this so I could look back at it and <laughs> yes, there's so much more. I really would just break it down into two kind of main things and then do like five little tips and tricks, like little things like the combining the yep. PDF, you know, throw in that, throw in a few, maybe the folder summary page so they can look at that. Just throw in like five quick things. Um, but then, you know, there's always people who ask a lot of questions too which you can always direct questions to me. I think in your archive, if you still go here and you click on questions, it should still pull. 
why is it pulling up this weird mail account? What? Anyway, it should pull up me. Okay. Do I not have email? I mean, email is right here. Why is it doing that? But it should pull up an email that goes directly to me. So you can just click on click on that and it'll go to me. So if anyone has any questions uh, okay. or they want me to demo anything or um, it also, that's how we get our ideas for enhancements too. When people have questions and they want to try using something. So, okay. Uh, so there we go. So what I, we should meet again, obviously, and kind of go over clearly about things and steps and um, I don't know if you want to kind of pick out some of the things we talked and I'll send you both of these release notes and you can kind of look through at least the first few pages of them. Once you get down, it, it starts saying stuff like, um, oh, this one doesn't, thank goodness. Okay, but one of these goes down and it's all the bugs. <laughs> So these are stuff you don't really need to care about, like resolved issue and workflow where the not equals condition is not filtering correctly with multiple option selection. You don't need to know any of that and no one really I won't know what it means. <laughs> it's just us saying, hey, we fixed this for you guys. So what I'll do is I'll send both of these to you and this just kind of goes step by step everything we looked at and it has drawings and pictures and so that'll be helpful as well as watching this again. Um, and it, it it has most of the stuff, not the email, sending out email stuff. So you'll have to, you know, you can contact me again about that. But um, yeah, sending out emails and stuff, you can kind of play around with that if you like. But um, if you want me to go over it again sometime, just don't hesitate to call me. Okay. Um, and then I think, I don't know, can I, I might be able to just attach them in this, but I think I'll just email them to you. Okay. These release notes. That way you've got them. Oh, these are my... My mother and I are going on a cruise in a year and I'm like, I'm supposed to log in and create this account and I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, <laughs> um, so back to where we were. Um, I will email those. Let me know if you have any questions and we can kind of go over everything again or if you want to present to me and we can look at it or anytime. I'm usually available and I don't think I'm going anywhere for the next month, so. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, and then we'll um, do an email with um, Sean asking to set up some test ones, right? Yeah, um, I'll do okay. that right now so we don't forget. And um, he'll get it because he's had to create a lot of those for us. Okay. <laughs> so he should understand what we're talking about. And um, But I'll do that right now. And just because I don't want you to have to log into some other account and you're confused and... And well, and then that lets me go in and play with it and make yes. sure that I'm understanding it um, and can, you know, set some things up, you know, ready to demo for that day. So, yeah. Yeah. OK, I am going to. Are you still there? Oh, okay, yep. yeah. OK, I stopped presenting. I don't know if it stopped recording, but um, it has not stopped. OK, stop sharing. Whatever. I think it's still recording. It's yeah. So I'll numbers. send out yeah. I'll send out that email, um, but I'll CC you on it, and we'll just okay. work with him. We'll get those created. Um, I think two is at least max, but then we can create some fictional ones if you want to share to things. That, okay. But you just need one or two that shows all the RAM quest information, because yeah. sometimes you need to see that stuff. So, um, really, you probably only need one, but we'll ask him to create two. So um, okay. I'll do that now, and then I'll send you those two uh, release notes. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate so much your help with this because Absolutely. I would be lost. <laughs> Absolutely. And sorry if I go fast or I mix around or I'm moving around too fast. No. But it'll no, be better. That's why we recorded than... it, so I can <laughs> yes. look back at it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. You can look for those emails now. Thanks right. so much. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.